Good day. I'm Herb Stevenson. This is a continuation of the mini series that we put on the uh, Healing Den uh, website. It's um, today we're going to be talking about attention. In other words, to what are you attending, or what are we attending? And when we look at this, uh, we're going to begin to realize that it has everything to do with presence. So this about 15 minutes we'll be going over this, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. So one of the issues that most people struggle with is mindfulness, is is being willing to be open to learn, unlearn, and relearn. Uh, so many of the things that we have within our minds are not really being paid attention to. Um, it's more like we are habitually just reacting to life. And so the impact of, of attentiveness is, is that we are aware that we are learning, we unlearn and we relearn on a constant basis throughout our lives. And that'll be something that's important to you as we go through these slides. So something that you've heard over and over again, be where you are, otherwise you'll miss your life. If I'm not fully present and I'm living in my past, I've missed everything. If I'm only dreaming about my future, I've missed my life. It's in other words, is I'm not living. And the only way that you can live is by paying attention to what are you attending to. So attention is a form of presencing, which I'll get into a little bit further down the road. But attention is how we come into presence, engaged in various ways to experience and make meaning of those experiences. How I focus my attention, if I do it mindfully, changes my whole experience. So if I'm walking down the street and the sky and the trees are all around me, but I'm paying no attention to them, I'm only paying attention to what's going on in my mind. I'm not present, if I'm only, unless you want to say I'm present only to what's going on in my mind. But generally, that's worrying. Presence is being present to what is in the moment, what is around you, and doing it consciously and with mindfulness. So if we're scattered or dispersed or distracted, then that's how we are and that's how we come into presence. Our presence is scattered, dispersed, distracted. If we're gathered and focused, tension collects in us our being and in so doing brings forth a more integrated manifestation. In other words, a wholeness, a calmness, centeredness, a contentment to life. If I'm fully focused, I see and hear with my whole being. And this is basically a lot of people have had moments where they just felt the oneness of life around them. And the impact of it is, is that by being fully focused, we begin to release the, the shackles of the mind and are just being present to ourselves. So attending to what, to the presence of what is present is a big deal or is, is the crit critical aspect that we're all trying to, to attain. And attending to the presence of what is present, oftentimes, if you look at this picture, you see so many things going on around this individual. Another way I've often uh, I've described it is, is if you bother to s slow down and watch the sunrise in the morning and just allow yourself to breathe in and breathe out, what ends up happening is your focus shifts and you see a vibrant colors and you feel as if you've become one with that morning sky, that sunrise. It's a very, very powerful experience. So attention focuses our being in several ways to look at it. Attention is essentially related to the presencing of being. And attention is my presence in the world that leads to the doorway of my being. And I mean my capital M being. So focalization then is tension is taking possession of my mind, meaning I am stopping the habitualized processes that I have created, what has become my personality, if you so to speak. And in doing that, becomes we begin to focus something on all the possible objects or trains of thought. We just begin to realize that I've had people who go through meditation with me and come back and saying, is this the first time I witnessed all of my thoughts instead of being or experiencing as if I'm doing being all of my thoughts. So focalization, concentration of consciousness are the essence of attention. 
And what that does for us is, is it reshapes our mind from running from one thing to the other, either to feel safe or be on time or the various things that we do to ourselves. It begins to relax and slow down. So attention is to what are we attending is a really critical piece. Attention is characterized by focalization as well as another structuring element, which is our interest. And the mind often tells us what our interest is but we're attracted to phenomena. We are called upon to understand the world. And when we look at that, then we begin to realize we are a spirit who is trying to have a human experience in the physical realms and the physical world. And when we start paying attention to what we're interested in and not interested in, we begin to realize to what are we attending and realize our world is much larger than the small little aspects of what we have created in ourselves. So attention thus assists in the world making, constructing meaning, organizing reality according to hierarchies of interest. In other words, all of my experiences and how I have framed them into a theme such as safety or survival or thriving or some other thing that is important to you, success. We shape our entire, how we make a meaning and then organize our reality around those interests. And when we realize that we created those and we can change those or expand those, we begin to realize to what are we attending can be much more than what we had thought. So the aim of spiritual attention is that we cease to be, an, to be passive and to become an active agent of attention. In other words, I guess the best way to say it would be is active attentiveness. I am fully participating. So it's learning how to control and eventually eliminate the automatic, egocentric, habit-determined patterns of thought and daily encounters as we begin to move towards meditation and prayers, or as we would in meditation and prayers. Meditation and prayers is one of the key things because what it does is it eventually leads us to the silence of the mind and we begin to realize and connect to a knowing far deeper than we'd ever experienced. And that spiritual tension is those who are silent, self-effacing, and attentive become the recipients of confidences, which is knowings. So presence is. Several people have talked about it, but attention is a key element of Simone Weil and Kierkegaard's conception of prayer as a waiting for the grace of God, which is presence. So Simone Weil put it as, as humility is attentive, patience. We let go of our ego, our urge to surf through the multiple thoughts, uh, trying to force reality into what we want instead of surrender to allow in reality of what truly is in front of us. So attention consists of suspending our thought, leaving it detached, empty, and ready to be penetrated by the object, which is that subject of our interest means holding in our minds within reach of this thought, but on a lower level and not in contact with it. So in other words, we quit trying to force something to be real. We establish truly by being receptive what is real, and that begins to shape our entire reality. I like uh, Keanu Reeves as a simple act of paying attention can take you a long way because he obviously is in his younger years, but the, the point of it is, is he recognized the same thing, that most people do not have control of their own mind. They continually uh, are bouncing around instead of paying attention to what's happening and listening actively. So above all, our thoughts should be empty, waiting and not seeking anything, but ready to receive it as naked truth, the object that is to penetrate it. And what that means is, if I allow to come through me, whatever is around me, whether it's me, the soft eyes of looking at somebody else directly in the eye and experience the presencing of the two of us coming together, that's the truth the object that is to penetrate. In other words, we allow the presence of somebody else to penetrate or pierce us. And in so doing it, we do the same thing for them. So you'll become way less concerned with what other people think of you when you realize how seldom they do. In other words, they think about what uh, you think of them. We obviously, when we're younger, worry about all those things because cliques wouldn't form and all sorts of 
popularity issues wouldn't have, wouldn't be formed. But when we really get down to it, what matters the most is what am I present to? And am I present to what other people think? I waste a whole lot of time trying to guess and worry about that instead of just being who I am and that being sufficient. Even though it's sad that Robin Williams committed suicide and he struggled with depression, I really appreciate how hard he worked. And in, in this quote, you will have bad times, but they will always wake you up to the stuff you weren't paying attention to. And I find that extremely valuable, even though he suffered from severe depression for so many years and took his life. He was working on it uh, diligently right up to his death. So presence heals time crystals. Um, I, I put this in because um, the res restoration of the divine energy presence to f the frozen and neglected moments in time instantly restores peace to any situation regardless of the underlying conditions. For those of you who've been studying the healing den, you'll notice that we've been talking about time crystals for years, which are frozen moments in time. And those, time is a place. And if we're constantly going back to that place in the past, we're not living in the present. But when we become fully present, our presence being in this moment, examining whatever the trauma was or whatever the frozen moment, dissolves it. And Richard Dotz recently has joined in at the same type of thought process that we've been doing. Just be. When working within presence, it is never your responsibility to figure things out. You don't have to use your mind to think about how to undo a negative situation. So when healing presence, when we're working with healing presence in the healing den, what ends up happening is just being fully present and allowing our minds to relax, what ends up happening is we realize this person with in, in front of us or myself in a meditation is not a problem to be solved. I might be wanting to solve a problem, but I am myself not a problem to be solved or fixed. So when we do healing presence, we just simply hold the person in a healing position, in other words, healing energy. And that triggers, presence is contagious, so that triggers the person into moving forward into their own presence, which allows or invites a frozen moment, time crystal, to rise up and dissolve without going into the trauma. Because we don't go back to the past, we bring the, the frozen moment into the present. So all you need to do is remain present to dissolve the persistent energy patterns holding everything in place. Again, Richard Dobbs put this in his book, something we've been doing for years. But it's, it's good for, I want to include this because it shows that others are seeing the same thing that we're seeing in healing presence, which is with presence, your presence, you become a healing presence for yourself as well as others because you've eliminated all the judgments and the fears and the traumas by not engaging those energy, but just staying present and allowing the energy to come directly into this moment. The zero point, pure presence, the natural state of the universe is divine perfection. When the underlying energies are freed up, they return to the zero state of oneness. The zero point is noted in most spiritual traditions, uh, Buddha, Various others in therapy, Bridge Pearls often refer to as the zero point. It's that place where there is nothing but the here and now. There is no past, there is no future. Past is already gone, future is not here. So the only thing is real. And when we focus on staying in this oneness, this state of zero point, just here in the moment without conversations in our head or anything else, is we begin to heal. And so all these underlying energies, all these unfinished businesses of the past go away, begin to dissolve. This leads us to a, another statement of Simone uh, Weil had put out, a tenderness is the heart of prayer. So a tenderness leads to presence. Presence becomes the heart of prayer. Is another way of saying is we become the prayer. That's how we get healing presence. Another thing that is uh, always a good one is there's a voice that doesn't use words. Listen by rooming. It's, it's, it's not a voice, it's a deep knowing. And it's, it suddenly is awareness and knowing comes to us from the depths of ourself. 
if you so, or the source, whichever you wish to put. And my way of describing that is when I took a Kierkegaard, he had one called Listening to God, and it triggered me to actually ask myself, how do I hear God? And uh, so I wrote this, and this has been actually a progression over many years. As my presence became more attentive and inward, I consciously realized that my mind had less and less to say. I became completely silent, started to listen to the inviting emptiness within. I son suddenly understood that praying is being, not merely being silent, but being deeply, patiently, persistently, intimate within myself until I was becoming the presence of what is present. Praying involves silence and being fully in the silence, the essence, while unwavering and relentlessly waiting in naked awareness until I heard the knowing deep within my own heart as a manifest manifesting presence that I am the prayer. I close with that in the sense of what if that were true? What if you are the prayer? And all of the emanations of my life are being played out. But if I get completely present to myself, the world changes. We begin to get clarity about ourselves. And as a result, the world shifts for us. It is more inviting, it is less threatening. We feel safer. I frequently, when we're going through various processes, talk about the safest place that you will ever experience is when you're fully grounded and deep within yourself. Ponder that. I think you'll find gold mines of discovery. So please take care, be well, and I will look forward to uh, coming back again with the uh, next session.